Hey guys, and welcome back to Alone in the Dark. When we last left off, we were pretty lost. We didn't really know what to do. Uh, however, I have just discovered what we were supposed to be doing by taking a thumb through a guide. By thumb through a guide, I more aptly mean taking a scroll through a guide. Do you remember that room that we came across uh, with the large mirror inside? And it says the mirror is cracked. Yeah, yeah, apparently we have to shoot that mirror and completely destroy it. The only problem is I've got to remember where that mirror was, uh, which is going to be a bit of a pain in the dick. It wasn't in here. That's kind of annoying because like... Uh, was it down here? Part of me wants to say that that was a really obvious thing to do, but actually it's really not. I'm surprised that we need... Oh, that's a zombie room. Uh, pretty sure it wasn't. Oh god, I can't even remember where that pissing room was now. Wasn't up there, because that leads upstairs. Maybe it was, maybe it was past that zombie. Let's go walk past the Zamble and see if we can find what we need. Oh god. Oh. That's actually really easy to get past. Ah, that bloody thing. Yeah, we don't really want to be playing around with him. Not really. Uh ah shit. Yeah, there wasn't actually anything back here, was there? Okay. Okay. Those zombies appear to be a lot easier to avoid than I thought they were. Um, God damn it. Where the hell? No. No. Pretty sure this isn't where we want to be. Alright, let's see if we can... Nope, we can't bloody get past it. Uh, was it through here? Uh, oh god. Actually, I th think it was in here. Yes, it was here. Uh, thought I'd like to take that dog out. I mean, we kind of don't have much to fight with. Oh man, those dogs are tough. Yeah, so apparently... Mirror appears to be cracked. Apparently we've got to shoot this. Which... I'm going to be honest, I never would have thought about that. Their words are like spears. Like lightning, bringing great rolls of thunder. They emanate from the mouths of the gods themselves, you, witch doctor, who read them. Beware, the danger they conceal is far greater than the power you desire. The terrible anger of the great, uh, oh god, Ig them will rain down on any usurper. Know this, witch doctor, that this language was passed down by your father, from your father's father and beyond. It is your flesh, it is your blood. Your duty is to serve humankind in this battle against the shadow of the night. The ritual to open the gate can only be accomplished during the 18th cycle of the moon. Which doctor, you will need to invoke the seven names of the seven gods of light. And there's oh, gods of light. Then reserve the flight, then observe the flight of the children of the sky. If their wings beat the air, renounce the ritual, for only the great sorrow should come of it. If they should hold their wings in the currents, however, prepare yourself for the longest night of your life. Pure and fearless of spirit, you must stand before the gate. Here, invoke the gods of light one last time, then kneel down, proclaim clearly these sacred words. And prepare thy... 
itself for the final combat. Okay, now I should go back and see Lucy. Ooh. Oh god. That's awkward. Wait. It literally takes us back into her room. Okay. So, have you seen Obed? Unfortunately, I think so. I don't know what's going on. Does Obed have enemies? What has he done that everyone hates him so? And why didn't you tell me that you had another son? Alice, that horrid beast is my son no longer. We have very little hope left. Our family bears a dark secret, young lady, and Alan is the cause of it. Obed gave you this gift. Hmm. A glass prism. I know too well what it is. Oh, poor poor Howard. What have I done to deserve this hell? Oof. Holy what shit. are you talking about? <laughs> you know better than I do. Enough. Leave me now. I'm weary and wish to sleep. Besides, all in all, I find you very unpleasant. Huh. Uh, we haven't done anything, but okay. At least I don't think we've done anything. Apart from, you know, climbing her window or something. Apparently trying to sleep. Uh, so I wonder if she's got anything else that she's holding out against us. I mean, let's be honest. She seems to be digging all kinds of stuff out of her pocket. Damn. Eight-sided crystal prism. Uh, does that go in the mirror? That was kind of odd that the game just like teleported us back here like that was kind of really strange but uh okay anywho i guess we have an item now if this doesn't go in the mirror then i was stuck again i suppose so let's have a little look inside. Ah, oh, bloody hell. And now there are zombies everywhere. Because... Of course there is. Jesus. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, I guess there are just enemies everywhere now. Where's this? We been in here before? We have not been in here before. Have some ammo, please. So this door is now apparently open. Okay. Oh man, so much reading. I am Morton. I realize that today I have tried for so long to escape my destiny. But my willpower was probably not strong enough. My fascination for the world of darkness has vanquished me. But I chose to resist cooperation, a choice my father never had because of that demon, De Certo. Uh, we killed him, I think. But I understood early on that only light can vanquish darkness. Magnesium bullets that were made in Italy have a remarkable effect on the smaller creatures, but they have proved inadequate to deal with the stronger monsters dwelling deep in the entrails of the night. The work of the French scientist de Broglie has greatly inspired my research. The properties of lightning, light he discovered and its uh, undulating nature are remarkable. 
It is thus possible to concentrate and amplify it, to rupture its movement in phase, and thus transform it into a terrible destructive energy. The information I possess about the molecular structure of the shadows of the night is fragmentary, but my study of them has produced conclusive results that their capacities for absorption of light energy are limited. Photoelectric energy cells at certain high levels destabilize its chemical structure. The molecules break down and the entire macro system implodes. If I could build a weapon able to concentrate light energy by a factor up to a hundred or even a thousand, then if I had the technology, if there weren't limits, God, if only somebody could help me. When Edenshaw defeated De Certo, that malevolent being who led our family down the path to dishonor, I knew that my Indian friend had been sent to me by the gods. As a child, I saw him completely in incantation at the circle of stones facing the direction of the junction de certo who knew their power employed his magic powers to dismulate some of the statues from the eyes of man january 13th 1953 this date will remain engraved on my memory forever my grandchildren were born today god alone knows what they will make of their lives. Howard wants to get them away from Shadow Island. I understand his reasons, but I fear that destiny will prove stronger than a poor father's desire. My research advances in leaps and bounds. Time is of the essence. I feel things stirring down below, like they know a date with destiny is nigh. Their forays into our world of light are becoming increasingly frequent. With every new day, my study of the creatures of darkness greets me with new surprises. It seems that they all possess the same genetic heritage. The expression, however, is insuitable. The entities are more closely related to minerals than organic life, but I find none better. It's though they have all been cloned from the same root matter. I have finally managed to strengthen the resonance power of the crystals. Now, only a matter... Only matter stands in my way. I've tested the first version of the photoelectric pulsar. Oof. And it literally fell to pieces in my hands. I fear I must brace myself for a long months of adjustment and careful tuning. Alan continues to show remarkable in, uh, intuition. His mind seems to be perfectly in tune with the creatures of the night. He even claims that they obey his commands. However, I am unhappy with the direction his research is taking. May 31st, 1973. My strength is abandoning me. Sharp pains shoot through my body like arrows. I have still so much left to do. I know that Alan belongs to another world entirely. For the first time ever, he told me about his real plans. He wants to fuse light and dark to restore their original unity, to reunify them, so defying their separation. I think he's been waiting for the moment when I'm too weak and too old to oppose him. God alone knows what he might do. For the first time in my life, last night, I prayed. Ooh, I do like these books. Oh, box of grenades. Nice. Wait. 49 pages. This is an actual Bible, isn't it? Richard Morton, back from exploration in front of one of the ships. <clears throat> the history of the famous Boston Dynasty. Boston Dynasty is full of unexplained events surprises and troubles some will come claim only my only goal in telling it is to damage the reputation of one of the most legendary fortunes of massachusetts i would like to say in my defense that i am simply doing my duty as a historian my account is based on reliable sources and interviews with witnesses who though they may be evasive are no less worthy of our interest if i echo certain rumors it is the belief that they too are. Uh, bleh, God. 
uh, I can't read my dyslexia has just kicked in big time of the Morton family history so Morton Oil Company so that's where he made his money then I guess Rock Oil contract for the exploration or exploitation of natural resources in uh, Venezuela signed by a representative of the Venezuelan government and by Richard Morton Morton family roots in America go back to the time of the great demographic changes during the decades following the founding of the USA. Although it's impossible to reconstruct the family history further back than the beginning of the 19th century, it appears that the family originated from a small town of Whitechapel in Sussex, England. Ah. It was Robert Morton, a linen merchant, who led his family to the American continent in 1823. He built his first paper factory on the heights of Beacon Hill. The success of Morton Papers was dazzling. It was Richard, Richard Morton, though. It, his older brother who founded the real Morton Empire by creating the Morton Oil Company on March 23, 1889, at the age of 37. 37 would have been quite old back then. The Icemen. The Morton family's history of secretly... of secrecy started with the discovery of a man in the ice during one of his company's prospecting expeditions in Greenland between 1891 and 93. Richard Morton, the influential public figure, became increasingly reclusive, abandoning the powerful Boston society circles frequented to launch himself into a daring exposition that led him back time after time to the site of his first macabre discovery <sighs> like I like a good journal guys but this is actually taking the piss right Deserto is in the background ah To assist in his missions, which sometimes ended in human and financial disaster, he called upon the Swedish and Norwegian sailors and mercenaries, among who was a certain Judas de Serto. De Serto was a risk taker, a warrior, a clairvoyant, interested in the arts of black magic. He was a suspicious character who seemed to have great influence over Richard Morton. The exact cause of this terrible accident was never discovered. Against expectations, the family business was flourishing. The Morton Oil Company won over the market, a won over market after market in Venezuela, in Indonesia, and in the North Sea. Its competitors, meanwhile, were struck by a string of surprising misfortunes. Oh, their key negotiators had accidents. Their directors developed mental health problems, and their lawyers would cave in suddenly. Ah, agreeing to disadvantage, uh, disadvantageous settlements. No public or private investigation managed to pin a criminal charge on the Morton Group. The family's fortune was known to be huge. However, nobody knew how huge. Gibson, around 900. Do you like these old photos? Samuel Gibson entered into Richard Morton's service on June 20th. 1899 this brilliant student had a knack for deciphering ancient languages it turned out that morton had entrusted him with the translation of inscriptions on tablets found near the famous iceman gibson's work led richard morton to shadow island huh. he really put a lot of work into this huh the fort that overlooks the island's bleak moors had been abandoned for a good 20 or so years. Soldiers stationed there had experienced hallucinations or suffered a sudden bounce of sheer madness. Others simply disappeared without a trace. I should also mention that a strange legend that claims the chapel situated near the fort had been the site of a strange ritual during the 17th century during which human sacrifices might have taken place. 
The state of Massachusetts needed no convincing when Richard Morton offered to buy the Shadow Island, which he did for a nominal sum. It seemed that, to start with, Richard Morton wanted to make the fort his home. He spent a real fortune and superhuman effort on this task before abandoning the idea. He elected instead to build a strange manor on the south side of the island. His decision to buy Shadow Island and live there was because of the engravings on the stone tablets were similar to those found in the island's deepest underground passageways. The letter from Gibson to his fiancée, dated, dated October 14th, 1902. Okay, can we... Yes, we can't read that. Fine. As work on translating, translation of the engravings advanced, relations between Morton and Gibson deteriorated. The student uh, relished in the romance, uh, romanticism of his work, where Morton seemed devoured by the destructive passion. What's more, Gibson discoveries, Gibson's discoveries seemed to terrify him. He confided his worries and fears in a long letter addressed to his young fiancée, who had stayed on the mainland. This was the last that was heard of him. Gibson's mother later received this terse message. Your son has disappeared. His body has not been found. My condolences. Signed, Richard Morton. Is that it? Search warrant. The peak of Richard Morton's disturbing activity coincided with a wave of disappearances amongst young girls of Boston's, uh, Boston's poorer neighbourhoods. This was the most disturbing episode of his life. It is my definite belief that, driven by the evil Del Certo, the founder of Mort the Morton dynasty was practising black magic rituals involving the sacrifice of innocent souls. Without a doubt, in the very chapel, sacrifices had taken place three centuries earlier. To what end? I do not know. The first disappearance started in October slash November 1903. They continued with frightening regularity of one a month, increasing during periods of equinox, until Richard Morton died on April 13th, 1905. On this date, the disappearances mysteriously stopped. Archibald Morton child. Doesn't look very happy to have killed a tiger there. But then I don't really like that sort of thing. Anyway, in 1874, Archibald Morton was born. The only child, Richard Morton and Susan Chalmers, the youngest daughter of Lord Chalmers, a ruined aristocrat and opium addict. While, Morton's or, while the Morton Oil Company business prospered, Archibald devoted his youth to the study of polar, the polar circles. Like his father, he mounted many expeditions. Like his father, he also developed a fascination for Shadow Island and in its strange secrets. Young Polyazin, men and women, in the hold of a ship. Slavery. It has slowly emerged that a large number of young men and women were uprooted from their distant homeland, taken to the islands from as early as the end of 1905. Archibald was, in this matter, more discreet than his father. Evidence of this is found not only in the accounts of some sailors, but also in the written confessions of a slave trading Thomas Plunkett in which Del Certo's name is cited several times. It seems, however, that no trace of these unfortunate men and women has ever been found on the island. Archibald Morton and Jennifer Richette. In 1897, Archibald Morton married his first wife, Jennifer Pritchett, a pastor's daughter and renowned organist she was a devout Christian and wrote long letters to her father recounting her disgust for her husband and her despair. Well, why did she marry him? The pastor, however, had disappeared the day after the marriage. 
and the undelivered letters were kept in the postal archives where I discovered them still sealed. Archibald treated her with uncommon cruelty. Ooh. She nevertheless gave birth to his son in 1899. Jeremy Morton as a child. Jeremy was one of weak and delicate nature, but early in life he already showed signs of exceptional intelligence. He too was haunted by the secrets of Shadow Island, but his general approach was more scientific. Jeremy Morton was an inventor. The breadth and originality of his inventions, which he never even bothered to patent, is highly impressive. He attended Congress and addressed conferences. In 1922, he struck up a lasting friendship with one of the last descendants of the uh, Kansas tribe, Joseph Edenshaw. The Native Americans settled on Shadow Island in 1924. Invoice from the Noble Company addressed Jeremy Morton. Explosives, phosphorus, magnesium. 50p. 50p. <sighs> it appears that Jeremy Morton collected a considerable arsenal of weaponry. In less than three years, he ordered over 200 pounds of explosives from the Nobel Company in Boston, along with large quantities of phosphorus and magnesium. Jeremy Morton and Joseph Eden. <laughs> Looked like two dapper gentlemen. The last 10 years of Jeremy Morton's life were the most secretive and mysterious. In his youth and middle age, the inventor genius hobnobbed with the cream of society. He spent his old age, however, as some recluse on the island. Some accountants of this period make the blood run cold. One example is the marriage of his son, Howard, born in 1931 to Lucy Dogan, for which he staged a reception on the island. Relations and members from a distant branch of the family were present. The party was disrupted by drama. When the horrifically mutilated body of one of the guests was discovered in the park adjacent to the manor, Lucy's brother, oof, Michael Dogan, claims to have seen a terrifying lizard-like creature with tentacles armed with enormous fangs. The horribly mutilated body of the guest. Damn. There is no doubt in my mind that the members of the Morton family, Jeremy, being two, being no exception, undertook dangerous and frightful experiments on the corpses discovered by Richard and his successors. Experiments that interfere with nature's own course, resurrections from the dead, crossbreeding, genetic manipulation. And there's their family tree. I feel like I've just read a Bible, but I mean, you know, we got some somewhat interesting information there, but come on, man. It, it's a bit excessive, to say the least. Now, I don't have the time to read. We just read a Bible, literally. Jesus. I guess we can't go this way. Bloody hell. That was, I mean, come on. I wonder how many people that actually played this game back in the day actually read this stuff. I'm going to wager it. Oh. Something glinting up there. There. Not really sure what that's about. Not really sure how to collect it either. Unless it is literally just that book shining behind some sort of glitch. I think that's what it is. Yeah, that's got to be what it is. 
because there ain't nothing there, Chief. So this whole family was conducting weird experiments. Yeah, because that, that flashlight actually shines through that bookcase there. Which is a little bit odd. I mean, hey, it's an old game, right? Uh, not get anything? I mean, we've got some grenades, which uh, I guess is cool. But we need, like, standard ammo as well, guys. And this music. Oh, dude. Music is really fugly. I'm assuming it's meant to sound like this. But being on an emulator, I'm not sure. Alright, let's head upstairs. The way she runs is kind of goofy. Ooh. Here's something up there. Being gribbly. That rain outside? What the hell is that? Weird. Yeah, something's definitely sounding gribbly. Ooh. And we can go up as well. Ooh. Turn the light on. Uh, yes. Fuck yeah, we'll take the shotgun shells. Sworn something flashing here. No? Sure? It's a little bit hard to actually pick shit up in this. You know. Guessing, like, if we miss stuff, we, you know. Ooh. Okay. Can we do anything? Oh my god. Alright. Anything in this chest? Well, I mean, we've got some more shotgun shells, which is cool. That. Apparently, nothing. Ah, uh, we're almost out of time. Well, we are out of time, but. Frustrating, because we're, like, actually getting somewhere. <laughs> so. Uh inclined to continue how many shotgun shots yeah we get like 30 odd 108 uh sure sure i mean i i expecting that i'm very happy though because we bloody needed them let's be honest Nothing here? Really? Okay. It doesn't look like there's anything to search up here either. But anyway, I think we're going to have to end this video here because otherwise we're going to be going on forever. And as much as I actually do want to continue, uh, we best leave it for now. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to play this game for like a week now because I'm back at work, which is major humongous quantities of dog shit but hey we gotta earn a buck right so interesting stuff i guess when we come back guys we're gonna go up and out of that ladder got a couple of items but i'm not sure what we're gonna use them for and obviously we uh, also have a massive pocket full of shotgun shells which is great not sure what i think about that whole mirror thing shooting the mirror that seems to be moon logic to me i i don't think i ever in a million years would have tried that um what happens if you have no ammo left technically when we came into that room there was a packet of 
at nine millis there anyway, but also two dogs spawned in that room as well. So yeah, that, that's some moon logic there. Uh, and of course there is no melee attack. That's interesting. That's really interesting. So I guess you can get to a point in this game where you can't continue, maybe? Unless those 9mm bullets always spawn if you run out or something? I'm not sure. Hmm. Kind of a dick move, though. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, till next time.